Boys and girls, welcome. Uh, Maurice, how's it, sir? All good. What's up with you, Brian? Uh, very well, thank you. X? I'm great. I'm great. Cool, calm, collected? Always. Perfect. Okay, boys. Um, today, basically, I thought of a very interesting topic, okay? Um, sports. Yeah. Basically, um, South Africa, cricket. They've just been knocked out by the boys that just got to their party, Netherlands. <laughs> I didn't even know they were that good in cricket, but somehow um, they've knocked us out. And then if you compound that to the upcoming events, we're actually playing the World Cup in football. And guess who's not there? Bafana, Bafana. South Africa again. Um, so what is it that we're doing wrong? that we're no longer competitive, that we're no longer fierce, that we're no longer that um, forced to be reckoned with in just sports in general, worldwide, to be precise, because yeah. that's the biggest stage. Yeah, that's true. There's, uh, there's a whole lot of things. I think uh, starting at grassroots, mm. um, you know, I, for, I'm a, I, I believe that at the beginning, there should be facilities being put in for kids growing up to say that you could possibly play soccer, you could possibly play cricket. There's sufficient facilities available, proper facilities. Yeah. Also, you have like um, the uh, proper coaches, you know, not just people saying, here's a ball, kick the ball and play. No, you need to have people <laughs> who can direct people, who can, you know, guide you as to this is... It, it, probably you need to be a goalkeeper or you need to be a striker and this is what you need to work on, technique and all those things. Um, and then besides that, the grassroots, I think there's now the other major impact as well, which is everything besides the actual sport, mm. the politics and all the other things that's happening besides that, like maybe also sponsorships and all those things that maybe we don't, we didn't source the funding for to actually uh, help the guys uh, in terms of their training and the facilities that is available for them to actually excel. Mm. Um, that's a very good point that you raise. Um, I've got um, contrasting views though. Um, again, because we said that before then um, we were, widely recognized you know um in almost everything um if i look at the people that actually did very well like our point of reference right um if you look at football the last time we qualified for a world cup in football was what 2010 qualified we hosted the world cup and so, yeah, we, so we got automatically qualified, automatic qualification yeah. i mean qualified meaning that you have to end the right to be there meritocracy was it not 98 or 90? Yeah. 2002, I think. 2002. Oh, Japan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Japan. Um, when, 2002. When, uh, um, so those guys were coming um, at the back of a very difficult time in South was Africa. It Korea? Yes, it must yeah. have been Korea. Yes, yeah, sorry, I think so. Yeah. But those guys were coming at the back of a very difficult time. So meaning that um, there wasn't much development that actually transpired, I would imagine. Right, um, we had just become um, a rainbow nation. Um, so I look at that, and I look at the facilities from that point. Would you say that those guys had more impetus? There was something that was actually motivating them into actually getting to like um, those high degrees that they've reached. That otherwise, um, maybe if the circumstances were not the same, they wouldn't have had. Um, the same push, the same motivation, the same drive, um, these ones don't actually have now because I almost feel like we, the facilities are there. Well, the development is there. Well, times have changed. They've gotten better, if anything at all. But it seems like we're moving far away. <laughs> I, think, I think this is the, this is the topic on everyone's uh, lips at the moment. You know, whenever South Africa... Uh, needs to either qualify for some type of tournament or, you know, we always look back at, uh, let's say, <laughs> your infamous Bafana Bafana, <laughs> right? Uh, we know that uh, 96, they done us proud and mm. they Dr. after Kumala like Zero. carrying on like 98 and, and so forth, they, they really done us proud. And, and from that time, we, we saw that uh, we just took a dip and we keep on taking a dip. <laughs> We're probably about to, or we. we I think we, a we dip might. is an understatement. We're <laughs> yeah, plummeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, so I think like just basically, 
if you look at the 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 play there, the people were re were really like it really meant something for them, right? And yes. and even like the nation be uh, you know being behind them like that that really created some type of atmosphere. You know, everywhere mm. where you went, Good you point. know. Uh, Bafana was on your lips, and as well as the '95 uh, Rugby World Cup. World Cup, yes. You know, like the the marketing that went around. You know, the the hype mm. in our, our major cities, mm. and people of 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 color coming together and standing behind the rugby players, and and as well as the soccer players now. And I think you know, you you have a, uh, you know, the question that you pose: What is what, what actually went wrong? I mean, like, yes, we do need development, mm. and I'd like to I'd like to also inform you that in two thousand and uh, two thousand and two, or when you know, or prior to that, mm -hmm. there was development schools. There were development uh, places where where people really, you know. But I think that there wasn't like. I was summarizing enough. those to be absent now. To be absent now in today's world. Well, today I think it should have it should have increased. Oh, they should right? have gotten better. They should have gotten better. Yeah, there should have been more facilities. Yeah, you know, because let's say from from where we came from, obviously from from where we came from, we would then say no, let's improve our facilities because look, we're on the right path. Mm. Right. I mean, if you look at look at like I, I saw some training. I think it was um, in Real Madrid or someone that was showing the training that was happening behind the scenes. People now train their ankles. They train things that I didn't know that people <laughs> had before. Like the way they yeah. do all these things, they keep pushing the boundaries further and further. So yeah. my whole point about this is yes, there's facilities that's available. I mean, there's there's soccer pitches, but my my problem with those are um, th those facilities are that they not well maintained they not well utilized they don't have uh, direct clear direction in my opinion mm. from what i've seen that the, i mean for example look at the cricket right we have one of the greatest cricketers that has ever played the game in jacques mm -hmm. we have some of the greatest bowlers who has ever bowled the ball Macca you Antini. know Macca Antini, mm -hmm. sean pollock, sean pollock. Um, dale stain these are guys that have the 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 stats are high up there. Mm. Um, Prime Monday Dale Morkel, Stain, um, um, Vernon Filanda, and also that just shows you the diversity ah, of plays that I, I've just yeah. mentioned, right? So showing that the, the, there's a broad scale of 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 players that we can actually make use of to plow back Mark in. Boucher. Mark Boucher to 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 plow back into the communities and actually 100%. develop the guys coming up. So the problem now comes in where you have. Um, some of our players that join in the team at 30 something mm. the, the 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 foundation may be there in the sense what if of they join based on merit is are, are we now saying maybe like it's too little too late i think that you know on merit it is like basically number one mm -hmm. people should be put in the team on merit let's let's start a hundred percent number two is what i'm saying about the age also is that it, especially in sport is not something that you can join in late and yeah stay well fundamentally there must be time. something wrong when you only like making your breakthrough at that age yes i agree with you and another thing coming to that point as well there are so many players that have left south africa talking about the loss that we had just uh, um, actually experienced now against netherlands Mm. Three of those team, uh, three players. of those players are actually from South Africa, and they've played for South African national team. Some of them. Can I ask you a question, Maurice? Yeah. Um, just to qualify that statement of yours, mm. right now, like you are a very gifted footballer, right? Um, you can do it um, at any bigger level. Let's say, for instance, you're playing in the English Premiership, mm. and you impress everyone, but you're originally from South Africa. Mm. Would you then choose to play for South Africa or would you play for England if England is offering you the opportunity to represent them rather? So with the current... And what's your rationale? The, what's your logic? Yeah, in, the in current your... landscape of what I'm seeing, right? Mm. Um, I would play for England. Mm. And, okay. and, and it's not about patriocracy mm -hmm. because I think that in terms of getting the opportunity to play number one, mm -hmm. um, getting the opportunity to play also for a team 
Yes. Not individuals because like it doesn't help if at the end of the day I'm um I'm a superstar, you are a superstar and uh the whole t- every single game we losing. We don't qualify for World Cup. We don't win Fcon. Nothing actually happens within the football. I mean at the end of the day that's also my bread and my bread and milk. Yes, so 100%. now at the end of the day I can't feed my family because we just not doing anything. Um, so yes. in that case I would play for a team that is actually able to help me get to my best. So or, I, or I like your answer. Basically playing for a team that uh that continues to strive and to grow. You've to, got you got a better chance. You know basically. you don't you, you don't want to be a one hit wonder. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So so, so basically Like also with 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 dum, kids, dum, we dum, we dum, see dum, there's a lot of dum, talented dum, kids dum, dum, in communities, mm. like in in underprivileged communities, and all they need is facilities. Mm. You see that you know once 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 it's the the right facilities for these kids, I'm sure. They will you thrive. know, you look you, at they would thrive. You'll find you'll find a lot of you'll find a lot of talent there. Okay. But now these sports are so expensive for them because you'll find out that. The facilities is not actually in your area, yeah. or you need to buy, uh, let's say, a, a cricket you. bat. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. A cricket bat, and you don't have money for that. Some of them is four thousand rand a bat. Imagine. You know? So I want to challenge you, X. There's there's no there's no uh, nets at the thingy at the soccer field. Talking about that, I like the point no. I want to challenge there. X. Yeah, you can challenge way. X well, as soon as I'm done. Just to add to what X was saying, also, um, Drogba. Mm-hmm. Born in Côte d'Ivoire, he went over to Paris, to France. But he grew up that side. Yeah, he grew up that side. He yeah. was born in Côte d'Ivoire. Yes. He grew up that side because his family sent him over there to get a better education. Yes, 100%. He then went to his uncle. Mm. He stayed with his uncle, who then encouraged him to play football. And then there were more facilities than mm. what there were in Côte d'Ivoire. Yes. Hence, Drogba was able to tr- to develop into the player yeah, he that is, he yes. actually is. Or he turned out to be. Yeah, he turned out to be playing. Yes. Uh, and, 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 uh, speak, and then coming back, where did he play most of his football? In, in, in France. In, in France and in, in UK. Because in Côte d'Ivoire, the facilities are just not as, or, or, or football is not as developed as what it is yes. in Europe and in other countries Within. I acquiesce with that statement 100%, but I want to go back to this gentleman go because he thinks he's going to get away with it. What about <laughs> what about the Brazilians who come from the favelas, if I say it right? Those guys, they also don't grow up in, um, in, 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 in good environments where they have all the facilities, but boy, when they take the international stage, don't they own it? Now, I want to tell you something. Right, I wanna say for me, it's a question of mentality. Before anything else, because if you are succeeding, your Jack Callis, your Mark Bouchers, these people have achieved tremendously. Right, you need to have pride. Let's start there first. You need to play with pride. You need to understand that what you are actually taking on now is a bigger responsibility. Mentality is very key. The South African football coach said he's a very polarizing figure. I must put it Wait, out which there. Which coach, though? Bafana, The, Bafana? Yes, or Bafana, or Bafana. Okay. Um, he said things that really shook the whole of South Africa. And people were on the defense instead of actually taking the truth as it is represented as it is presented to them because the guy was speaking facts he says okay you want me to qualify for the world cup but i will tell you this we are going against um they were playing ghana right he says the players that play for ghana play in the premier league they play in the bundesliga they play in um in 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 in, in league One in 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 france right in italy La Liga. Here in South Africa, right, your best player plays in Egypt mm. and he's not even a starter. Mm. He says Morocco. Morocco, their goalkeeper won the CAF Champions League, which is an equivalent of UEFA Champions League, right? He says he comes to the Morocco national squad. 
he's the third choice goalkeeper. <laughs> third choice. <laughs> and you want me to beat those guys. You are saying that I must now turn water into wine. Again, I'm going back to that point. Those guys that we, we were mentioning, Benny McCarthy, where was Benny McCarthy playing? Porto. Mm. Where else? Where's them? West Ham in England. By the way, Benny McCarthy won and the Champions I think League. Blackburn, yes. Blackburn, Blackburn Rovers. Rovers. Yeah. Blackburn Rovers. Yeah. Um, Steven Pina. Mm. In 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 um in UK, by the way, um the Evertonians, mm. right? They respected the guy. Mm. There there was a segment of a fan base that would like chant his name. Mm. Go back to Pride. I said Pride here in South Africa. Overseas, right? We are, we are doing a compare and contrast, mm. right? We are talking about why we haven't actually been able to reach those levels. Let's talk about us now, mm. the spectators, the fans, mm. right? Ayanda, the most handsome dude in the world, is from Eastern Cape. <laughs> Guess who does he support? He supports a team from Pretoria, mm. Sundowns in South Africa. But in UK, if you are from West London, you are supporting Chelsea. If you are from Manchester, you are supporting either Manchester United. I can't even say Manchester City because you guys don't have fans. You are supporting <laughs> Manchester United, right? <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have that here in South Africa. That pride that I'm, that I'm talking about. You are from Soweto, but you are supporting a team that's based in Pretoria. So you basically, if you cannot support, and this actually catapults to families as well to the, the, the agents that are actually representing these players. Because first of all, think of it this way. If you can't support your son, but you're supporting the son next door. <laughs> I like the point you're making about uh, community, basically. Because yes. if you see, if you grow up in a community and you're seeing one of the community children, for example, has an opportunity to go overseas and like train or go study and stuff like that. Back in the days, what they used to do, I think is it called Bosbarad or something, where they have like fundraisers in the community so that the community can fund this kid to go overseas. Mm. Instead Bust of now... Up. What did you say? Call it the bus stop. Bus stop, oh, okay. So instead of now, you know, just taking your money and, you know, squandering it on something else, you start <laughs> building within, you know? So I, I like that point, although I don't fully agree with it, but I like it and I respect it fully because it is important at the end of the day. Yeah. With it, also, um, Brian in, in, in X-Men, what I'm, like, in terms of what you said, the mentality, the mentality is also something that you would get from your experienced players. Mm. Jacques Callas was one that also advocated for that a lot when he spoke about, you know, his focus. Hashim Amla also. You'd see them playing the game and you'd wonder, what, what is this guy looking at there? I think some players even, they went to the pitch to go look and say, what is it that you, while he was busy batting, because his, his technique used to be so driven, so focused, mm. that he would not be distracted by anything around him. He would only focus on his game. Yes. And when it's when when he's not folk, when he's um, standing and waiting um, for the bowler to get to their uh, their run up, he would be looking down on the ground, clearing the pitch, doing something very calm and meditative, basically to get himself in the right frame of mind. Mm. If I go play the game now, I don't understand all of those things. I don't know this is how you you know maintain a good temperament. Yes. So coming back to that facilities and the training and the right type of staff that's there to actually guide you because a team is not based on the star player. It's based on an entire group of people in the front line and the back line. So, so Maurice, question. Supporting staff. Quick yeah. question. So yeah. are we saying that um, the opposite is not true with the Brazilians because... Somehow the Brazilians seem to be in similar conditions Thank as the you South for Africans. But remember, right? remember, with 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 okay, look at look you. That, that's a good point with with the Brazilians. Yes. Remember, soccer is dominant in Brazil, right? So even though they don't have the correct facilities, but they're passionate about it. Listen. They're passionate about it. And mm -hmm. just as much as you, you've mentioned now, in England, where when you're in Manchester, you'd, you'd obviously, uh, if you live in Manchester, you'd, you'd, you'd support that particular team in your 
in your area, yeah, yeah, and you know, like yeah, on a Sunday, see. yeah, on a sun on a Sunday when when this when there's a soccer game, you know, like shops like literally closes down, and people joins these, you know, goes to the stadium, and and that is the culture they've created, and we've also had that culture, like, but it's basically just when okay, you your derby chiefs and pirates, but I feel that it's also there's not so much. Uh, it's not there's no there's no longer so much hype around it like back then. That's for me, mm. my opinion, right? Uh, so basically, it's just it's just about the the hype and the support. And and when we made the point, now we saw like when we said our national team is actually plummeting. <laughs> You know, to the Mariana Trench, that's what we said. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, so coming back to the some point people, of Brazil. Some sorry. people are just, let, let's just, sorry, I'm going to let you finish Thank now. You. Like, some people are just, they're just frustrated with that because I mean, like, you're supporting exactly. some, you're supporting a team, but they're not performing. Like, you there's know, nothing. So, happening. okay, yes. maybe no, like the, the, there's a distinction between supporting and being a fan. Maybe we're just fans. We're not supporting because when you support, yeah. you must support through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. supporting Chelsea right now and they're not doing well. They're playing dog shit football, but I'm behind them. Yeah. I hate to watch them. They're atrocious <laughs> every, every, every week, even when they win. I'm like, oh, this is not a Chelsea I'm used to. You guys are atrocious. You are horrendous. You are a bunch of losers. But then again, like, Ch- but Champions I support, I support them. The, the, there's Champion League trophies that exist there. There's other league mm. trophies that exist there. You know, there's some just a track record of uh, at least not that long ago. Whereas we can't even talk about, in our cases, when last did we see like proper victories. Uh, praise to, to to the guys of the the rugby guys. Like they yes, they, they've they pushed, represent. They yeah, they've they've pushed really hard. Twice they've made us proud, and not even only then. You'll see that whenever we're playing, and even the, um, against like some of the great teams, like All Blacks and all that stuff, the guys are out there supporting one hundred percent because there is that belief that these guys are gonna bring the A game, you know, yeah. and they do bring the A game. Sometimes they do a, t- a tumble, which is also fine. It's part of you know the game. It's part of sports. It's part of what needs to happen. You win some, you lose some. Why um, can't we permeate that um, kind of um, attitude? Um, mental fortitude and behavior basically in in, in rugby so we need to find out what's happening but again like I'll, I'll come back to that um with the brazilian thing yes the difference with brazil and south africa is that even though they may not have the facilities like you mentioned coming from the favelas and so forth mm-hmm. as x mentioned in brazil it's like a religion basically i had a friend that actually traveled to brazil not too long ago shout out to uzi um, <laughs> and <clears throat> what he said is that when there's soccer being played, is basically like a holiday in Brazil. The whole mm. community, I'm talking about like club soccer. I'm not even talking about Brazil versus whoever. Just club soccer because there are clubs that's like really, everyone is passionate about the game. And what happens is that they support the teams and stuff like that. But to that point also about the mental fortitude, remember what happened to Neymar. When he played against, uh, when he was played just before he got uh, um, injured. No, no, no. Before he bought, he was bought for uh, from uh, Barcelona. Oh yes, he was by PSG. For, no, 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 no. He was playing for for the club in Brazil. BMG, uh, I think. Was, uh, no, no. The sponsor is BMG. What is Santos? Yes. He spoke back against the coach. He had some argument with the coach and yes, all that type yes, of stuff. Yes. And those type of tantrums that he had at a young age was based on not having that mental fortitude, not having that support structure, not having the training yes. to get to that um, professional level, basically. At the time, he was considered as one of the next really gifted players to have ever touched the ball. 100%. It was like, um, there was a, a comparison, obviously, that were made be- between him and Ronaldinho mm. um, in terms of his skill and all that type of things. Speaking about Ronaldinho as well, look what happened coming from the favelas, there's a handful of players that actually go out there and really thrive at the end of the day because that the foundation phase is actually not there. Yes, they have the skill and the ability, but the longevity mm. now is not there any longer. Maurice, you, you, you guys are just... Forget the foreplay. Penetrate, penetrate. I want to hear, why are those guys doing it and the South Africans aren't doing it? 
even though their conditions are particularly similar. So why? So what makes them um, different? What sets they, them they, apart? They, 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 culture they, is what I picked up. X was also alluding to culture no, being like a strong think, foundation. Okay, I, I, won't, I won't really say. Okay, let's say that they really enjoy what they do. And you can see the style of play. Because they really, I, they yes. really enjoy, they 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 really enjoy the 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 art, the game. They they enjoy entertaining people as well as themselves. You you see the the Ronaldinho's flair, and and not only Ronaldinho. There's other there's other players as well. You know how they how they do it like effortlessly. Okay, let's you know. leave those people. Let's talk about our own people. <laughs> Your stories are wishy-washy. No, Soccer let's talk about our one own in Brazil. Right? Let's yeah. start off there. Yes. Soccer is number one. So we have that. What do we have here? We have soccer, we have rugby, we have cricket. Yeah, but, but right? no, besides, yeah. besides the different sport, I'm just talking about each individual. Soccer is priority. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. In terms of how they live their life, soccer is number one. As in... If you can play soccer seven days a week, they'll play soccer seven days a week. They won't go to school. They won't go to work if that was an option. And when they play soccer, like I said, the city and the country comes to a standstill depending on where the soccer is being played. So I'm not even just talking about the support structure from remember, the fans. Re sorry, sorry, remember they also have... I'm they not have feeling a you, few, boys. I'm not feeling you, they, boys. They have a few academies as well. So yes. from grassroots level, exactly. as you said, that is where... It starts grassroots level. They know, they understand where where it actually starts. There's there's, there's another guy, uh, one one Dutch coach as well. I forgot his name. He also mentioned like, you know, when 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 training the the, you know, when you get into soccer, what actually happens? You, the kid, at the age of six, you know, you let that kid befriend the soccer ball. And as that, as the, the the kid befriends the soccer ball, he gets used to the soccer ball, you know. And this is just one of the examples, you know. We look at rugby as well, the same the same tactics, you know, the same strategy can be used in rugby and all other sports, grassroots levels, as you yeah. mentioned. So that is the foundation, because you see, even if you go to um, look at India, the cricket guys in India, some mm. of them you find them sixteen, you session Tenduka started playing international cricket at the age of 16. Mm. Look at, uh, in, 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 in the, um, uh, again, going back to Neymar, look at when, when Neymar actually started playing at a young age. Look at Messi. When was Messi in the Barcelona camp? Um, from the age of eight. Here's, here's another example. Forget my point. And yet, uh, sorry, sorry, X-Men. Mm. And yet, in Argentina, they're not the strongest country in terms of the, the, the I mean, in terms of like um, the, 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 the trophies and stuff that they had won. Argentina is, uh, in terms of World Cups, uh, in, in, uh, even the, the, Euro, um, the Euro Cup. The, but they Euro produce some of the best talents. I individuals. Yes, individuals. Team. Yes, they, they, agreed. As, yeah. so agreed. Again, coming back to that. So it's, it's a point of um, there's facilities that is available. When was the last time we produced an individual here in South Africa? <laughs> the last was, what, Pinar and Benny. I don't know who went first. No, and then you get, uh, there, there's others. Oh, uh, yeah, there's... Yeah. Serrero. And then you, yeah. you have... Uh, Can you talk is, about people that literally did and, and, and won something? Not just, they were just good. I, I don't... For me, like, it's pointless if you are just good and then you, you, you just... You're there, like... But win, winning what? Because it's not... It's a team Benny effort. Won, won, um, yeah, but it was, team, it, it was a team. It was a team Yeah, but he's, he's, got, he's got the medal. So what's the point of you being good if you can't take us anywhere, if you can't win us anything? Let's talk about people that actually win us things. We just talk about, we spoke about rugby right now. We weren't talking about their beautiful performances. We were talking about them actually winning something. So you're part of the history books. Mm. You'll never be part of the history books if you didn't win anything. Just another example with, with look at the, the guy who won the, the grandstand. I, I told you about the grand it. Slam. Um, uh, the ten, tennis grand slam. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what's his name? Olga Runa. He won it against uh, Djokovic. Djokovic. Uh -huh. You know, I think he's 19 or 18. Like, so he's cemented his place in the history You can books. understand, like, look, like at a young age, he's already been probably training to get to that level. Even our South African guy, he is now permanently living in, in, in the U.S. He's not playing, although he, he praise to, uh, and respect to him, he, he still represents South Africa, but he's lived in... Um, 
oh, what is his name? I forgot his name now, but he's like he's played on the top stage. Yeah, and international he is, stage. He has been representing South Africa ever since, but he doesn't live in South Africa at all. He mm. loves and trains in the US. Yeah. No, the the thing is, um, I I'm I'm actually very glad, Maurice, that you you did say that um, you'd pledge your allegiance to to the UK if you were um, a professional footballer. Um, for me, like one of the reasons why I wouldn't play for for South Africa, if I'm I'm speaking in clear terms, um, in in the UK, agents work for a player. In fact, in Europe, agents work for a player, right? Um, sports management um, services, they serve the player. In South Africa, players work for the agent. <laughs> I will do this for you. The agent tells you, you are going to this. I was, guys, I'm not lying. I was reading an article of a player that said, I was told by my agent that I'm going to this team. Players tell you, I don't want this team in Europe. I want to go to that team because you represent them and you have your own percentage mm. that you get from the sale. So you, you, you start there. Like the foundation, the education. I listened to a South African player after a game, analyzed the game, the performance. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys need to speak better about the game. And I'm not even talking about you guys like communicating in English now because you've got the free will to communicate in your own languages, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen players in Spain, for instance, um, not knowing Spanish, maybe speaking um, French, right? Mm -hmm. So when they're being asked questions, they respond in French. And many players don't actually know English mm -hmm. um, or in Europe. Mm -hmm. So even like um, in the Premier League, so when mm -hmm. they get interviewed in English, some of them actually respond in Spanish because they don't know English, right? So in your language, I'm not now like judging you. In your language, you guys can't even analyze the game. That's your bread and butter. You should be able to analyze the game. Don't, don't tell us something a six-year-old would tell us when you <laughs> ask them, like, how did you, how did you find the game? I, the ball was just round and it was fun. <laughs> Come on, guys. Like, talk to us. Let's, let's, let's be interested in actually hearing your thought process. Yeah about the actual game. So when you when you look at those tiny bit of things, yeah. the Europeans, when they plan games, I think you mentioned it um, when you were talking about AMLA, like these things. Those things are very key yeah. in sports. Understanding, we, we call it tactics. Yes. If you don't understand tactics, but you are in sports, then like you cannot, you, you, you cannot succeed in that field, in that exactly. industry. So for me, I feel like those things, they are missing at a fundamental level. Yes. And, and for us to bridge the gap, even though the Brazilians do get um, to experience maybe the similar conditions as South Africans, but the opportunities are much better for them than us here in South Africa or in Africa because those guys get scouted very earlier on in their careers. If we talk about Neymar, Real Madrid was already like um, poaching Neymar he even went to Spain for a sustained period. He just didn't enjoy the culture there. He felt like he missed his friends. He was too young yeah. and all of that. But otherwise, he would have been at Madrid at the age of 14. Was it 14 or something? Uh, now, let me ask you a question. So, if that is the case, right, where you're saying that maybe, okay, hypothetically, the, the, one of the main reasons that it is the way it is now is that we don't have opportunities. Would you then, uh, with the current team, scout to go play um international football here in south africa yes oh hi boys i'm sorry thank you i'm thank sorry you. boys thank you none so, of you actually give me the confidence where i can say you would play at an at an international exactly level and meant. for me it's all about i see the way that you think on the pitch yeah. i watch you boys i analyze you there is no presence of mind when you play. You use your skills. You play with instincts. You don't actually apply thinking in the way that you play. I've seen you a couple of times. All y'all can talk and about. And that's why I'm saying that that foundation, if you have a coach, <laughs> they tell you. Because, I mean, who can't play soccer? If you're just talking about kicking a ball. Yeah, there anyone There's nobody can. who can't play soccer. So, it comes down to now your thinking, like you mentioned, your the tactical ability. Because even if you're the fastest person, Usain Bolt is not the greatest uh, soccer player, but yet is the one of the greatest to have ever taken the track. So it's not just about your speed. Yet Thierry Henry is yes. praised for his speed. Theo Walcott is praised for their speed. But it was not just the speed that they had, the control of the ball as well. 
thinking, the tactical ability to see ahead of time. You're a chess player, yet you're playing soccer. You're able to, you know, place the ball the right places. Mm. So those things are coming from where? Foundation. Mm. You're not just instinct. Some people are not just instinctful when it comes to some of those things. So um, with those guys, they don't have that what in, in our our guys they don't have those facilities so you bring carlos alberto Pereira at the, at the point where we already having a team that is stuck in their ways mm. you can't unlearn from this point now it's, yes. it's kind of late to say Good in the point. next couple of months we need you to turn this thing around the foundation is completely skewed you're punching you like floyd start, now yeah man no, i'm all like muhammad ali i sting like a butterfly <laughs> or sting like a bee and fly like a butterfly float like a butterfly hey, okay. me, guys. Hey. so carry on yeah so with um you know when we do or you again when you're speaking about uh the scouts um mm. Uh, Diego Maradona mm. once played a, a six on six, I think, with Ronaldinho. And according to the the stories that uh, Ronaldinho's agent, if I'm not mistaken, reached out to try and get the game set up. Maradona then approached Ronaldinho and said, "You're the one person that gives me hope for football because of this guy's ability." This guy's skill, this guy, what this guy had in terms of, you know, that raw talent, but also the determination. And one of the, one of the biggest things I appreciate about Ronaldinho is not a diver. Mm. Remember what uh, Jogger Bonito say, Argue, uh, diving is for the swimming pool. You would kick that guy, you would just jump over and you would continue. Nowadays, everybody's just diving, diving, With diving. Smile. Like it's a, so, yeah. And, turning around and rolling and all that stuff. There's no passion for the game. Mm. You, 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 are, you are looking at maybe stats. You say, okay, if I dive close to the box, maybe they'll give a penalty and we'll win. It's not on merit. So are we saying, so are we also saying like, okay, with our, with, with, with our national team, as well as our South African teams, are we saying that the coach, because look, at Bafana, how many coaches we win? We, we, we That's had. not the problem. That's no, why. No, I'm not saying like. Yeah. Mm. I, I, yeah, I'm yeah, supporting your point as well. You get what I'm saying. So uh -huh. we can't say we like are very the good at are avoiding their problem <laughs> here in South Africa. <laughs> the or the just are, we, we can literally say that uh, the coaches are not the problem because yes. they tried different coaches. Mm. Yes. Right. International as well as national. Mm. You know. Carlos coaches Barrera, and, one million a month and <laughs> we didn't we we didn't succeed yeah. in there so we still need to find out where does the problem lie so now you've you used some process of elimination you said okay the let's problem change is the not, coach mm. we've changed so many coaches so yes. the problem is still there now we, we have can't the, the players coach. but 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 then you see the thing is like i always say like in a world where we are data driven we need to be informed by data right uh, yes um so how do we get informed by data let's let's take that instance right mm. um you fired so many coaches right mm. and the latest coach which is um currently occupying the position right has won something with an african country right so you have no excuse to say that um, you don't have um, a, um, a pedigree mm -hmm. um, to, 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 to operate um, at this level. You've done it. You've proven to us that you've done it. That's why we've acquired your services. But yet, um, you, you're not fitting the puzzles. And he has indeed given us feedback. Take it or leave it. You guys must stop being defensive, right? <laughs> you must just accept the truth for what it is. Your that's what he said. Mm. Your players are not good enough. That's what he said. Now I go back to my point. Do we have those? Do we have that? Because in practice we see what we see. We we can definitely understand that there's no theory behind it. You do not understand when you are putting that national jersey, what you're actually representing. And back then, it used to be so difficult for players to get into the squad because there were so many good players. So you needed to be extremely exceptional. I can tell you right now. The people that get call-ups and they will never get a call-up again, but they've represented their country. Well, they've gone and embarrassed us anyways on a big <laughs> stage, if you call that representing. But the, the point is, if you don't take what you do very seriously, and if you don't have like um, a long-term view, where do you want to see yourself? Firstly, in Brazil, players already know that I play for Santos, but 
my trajectory will take me to Barcelona, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Manchester United, um, anywhere in Europe. Do we have that in South Africa or do we say, I just want to play for these big teams and um, get good looking girls and dress well? And do we have that long term view to say that I want to play at the biggest stage? The last player here in South Africa who played in the Premier League was Pesitao. And I kept on telling people, I said, he's playing for Brighton, right? And I remember I had this conversation with KG and I said, who is he going to bench there? And I'm a player that watched, I'm a, I'm a guy that watched him a lot. And I said, who is he going to bench there? Because I've seen him here in South Africa. And I've, I, I've, been, I've been picking up things that I say he needs to improve on. And unfortunately for him, he then went to Al Ali, which is um, he, uh, a team in Egypt, mm. right? And even there, he couldn't exactly cut it. But then, um, when you actually tell people these things, they don't want to hear the truth, mm. right? But overseas, the way they analyze your game, mm. they analyze the decision that you made wrong in front of goal there when you were supposed to make this pass, but mm. then you made that pass. That's how serious they are about the sports. A guy understands that instead of this pass, I was supposed to make that pass, right? So if you don't have those things, uh, you, chess... You know, you know, the other day I was listening to... Um, I read something about uh, Sebastian Vettel in F1. Mm -hmm. He's retiring soon. Uh, he has two races left, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he's, he's just racing for Aston Martin. They say that after the race, this guy still spend time in the in the in the office. They go through the data. Yes. They go through the race tactics. They go through the performance of the car. They go through everything. This guy is retiring. He's basically doing his final victory lap. You know, he served his time in F1. He's, he's a four-time world champion. Mm. He's not um, someone that just uh, is a visitor. He's not a doom, 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 <laughs> doom, 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 can't touch this. This guy is a guy that has records behind his name, you know? Yes. So th they said this guy, they had to kick him out of the office because he is putting in so much work to, to understand where things could be improved how to extract as much as possible from the car, how to win. Even if you may not win the championship now, you build to the victory one step at a time, right? So you start off at a certain point. Yes, you're losing now. Yes, things are going down now. But you have the right mentality to actually get the team into the right uh, uh, positions and actually develop. Michael Schumacher went from uh, racing for, was it uh, Benetton, if I'm not mistaken? And then he moved to Ferrari. Mm. They were dead last or they were like somewhere far behind. They worked together tirelessly to develop the team to obviously what we know as one of the greatest to have, you know, ever have raced in the sport. Seven time world champion. The list goes on and on and on with that keen interest to get the team to victory by putting in the hard yards behind the scenes, by understanding what is required? What are other people doing coming to what you're saying when you say compare um, team to team, country yeah. to country? We can't even beat Cameroon. We can't even <laughs> beat Nigeria. We can't even beat uh, Cote d'Ivoire. We, we, we don't even feature in FCON. Mm, that's so true. We're not dominating Africa. Yeah, I think like this whole thing is... Uh, I think we, 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 we can't necessarily say we're closing this, uh, this topic because there's yeah. so many angles we can we can cover and we'll come back to this topic again, you know, and mm. maybe with, with more with guests, we'll, we'll probably get guests as well in order for them to, to help us. But I, I suppose in terms of the question, we've more than answered it as to why we've been knocked out. <laughs> uh, against Netherlands. Against who, Netherlands. Who actually was disqualified already. We were like on the, we were second on the list from, um, it was India number one, we are number two. All we just needed to do is either win or draw the game and we were probably going to be going through. Um, we couldn't do that. And why we're also not going to the World Cup, which is taking place in three weeks. So we will be on the sidelines like we've always been in football. Um, yeah. Big ups to Benny for going to, you know, taking it further even after he had retired. To Manchester United. Big ups to... 
uh, Pinar as well. Quentin you know, Fortune. Quentin Fortune. Is in the Manchester United Big, up, big yeah. ups to Lucas. Lucas, I was about to say that as well. Like this, and, but again, coming back to who are all those players? Those are all our older players. They are legends. By they the way, those legends. guys have like statues in those countries. Exactly. Lucas Hatebe has a statue in Leeds. Yeah. Um, same they, as Zuzmosiso Zuma. Um, where, yeah. where was he playing in Russia, Moscow? Yeah. Somewhere, but he has a statue there as well. But then, like, Dr. Kumalo is also. Dr. Kumalo is also like they a, legend. Made a, song. a legend. Okay, they also made a song of Lodge, no? Yeah. That's all we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and mediocrity, guys. Mediocrity. Hey, we're celebrating mediocrity these days, ah, in everything, especially sports. Like, the best. Imagine, when was the last time you saw a player like Ronaldinho? Okay, Neymar. In, in, in our sport or like in South Africa or, or generally? Oh, when was the last time you saw a player like um, Dr. Kumalo here in South Africa, for instance? And, uh, but, but Benny was special, bro. Sure. Benny in the 18 area. Sure. 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 <laughs> yeah, Benny, Benny was big. Was, yeah, Benny bro. came back to South Africa and still banged. As a big guy. As a big guy. But he wasn't even fit. At yeah. that time, he was eating chopping steaks. And he was... That he was yeah, because... Bro. Yeah, and I mean like the, the, the media was actually... The media actually said, like, nah, he's, 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 he's overweight fat, he's, yeah. and this. And he took two champions, uh, championships with, with Pirates. Yeah. Yeah, t- or two two titles Serious? or whatever. Oh. Yeah. By the way, that guy's name is Kevin Anderson, the tennis player. Kevin Anderson. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin Anderson. Um, we Okay, Maurice is your big fan. Boy. Respect. All right, guys. I suppose we've come to the closing, the closing end, which is always sad. But yeah, man, appreciate, appreciate the way yeah. that we've dissected this. Um, hopefully we can get better. We want to get better, yeah, guys. We encourage We're not just us. saying these things yeah. because it's very fun. It's no, we want to see you go yeah. back there again um, to the top. Um, and we encourage that you do so because you deserve to be um, representing the country at their highest level. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. 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 <laughs>